Welcome to my houseplant house! It's January 2024 and let's start off this year by giving you a houseplant tour. Do you love houseplants? Do you want to learn how to take care of more of houseplants? Do you want to learn little tips on um, maximizing your space so you can fit as many plants as possible but keep your house organized and looking clean looking? That's something that I was very interested in when I started my plant journey and I've had now more than 200 plants in my house for over two years and I still love them and I'd like to share with you how I plant style my house using them and maybe you'll get an idea of certain plants that you are interested in buying and see how they look after a few years um, help you make better choices and and just in help you in your plant journey uh, this video is gonna be full of green beautiful plants if you want to come and see them with me then keep on watching Let's start right here in my living room. This is one of my favorite parts um, of my plant display. When the reason is because I love vertical display of plants. Why? It eliminates having so many plants in the walking area of your house. So I really like putting them towards the walls. And of course, you're trying to find walls that have light. So we just definitely just have a plant curtain rod hanger and it's actually installed where in the nice piece of wood so it actually can hold um, all the weight we have it hooked in three different spots and basically that's the simple way of being able to hang plants from just not creating too many holes and um, what i've also done is i've attached more than one plant for example, I just got this little S hook and attached a plant underneath it. And sometimes they sell little plant hangers that are for two. So that's another thing I do and buy it whenever I can. So I have plenty of plants here. Let me give you a quick look. And I'm not going to spend too much time on each plant because there's a lot of plants. So let's start here with it, with an alocasia cupria. This is, wow, a stunning plant. Have you ever seen one of these? If you haven't, when you see one, you're going to be amazed because it has a metallic shine to it. It is beautiful. Um, right over here, we have a philodendron. And this is, I think, the silver stripe. Um, it didn't have a name on it when I found it, but it's not the Brazil one. <laughs> so I love this type of philodendrons. They get a little creamy pink when they have new growth. Um, they're easy to take care of. Um, they're climbing plants, so if you give them a nice wall, they would probably attach very nicely. I have it here more of a hanging um, basket. And then down here, we have a type of Hoya. And this is a, <laughs> this is a Hoya Macrophilia. I'm not sure. I'm having a bring my assistant did not know okay hopefully we'll put it on this video and this is a peperomia hope this one i saved from root rot and it's taken me a good year and a half for it to regrow but it has regrown um and it is a really really easy plant this one is not very hard when i over watered it i had it in a in a where i did not um drain the water excess water so that was a mistake in the beginning of the plant journey and I just thought it looked pretty, it was in glass, and that it has pretty thin roots, so be careful with that one. And then right over here, we have another type of Hoya. It's a Hoya Hindu rope. Um, and it is one of my favorite, because they're curly, curly. Um, if you're new to plants, Hoyas are awesome because they're thicker leaves, so they're 
Uh, they don't require watering as often. They're not very hard. If you give them more light, they'll grow faster on you and they can flower. But beware, mealybugs. They re mealybugs really try to get to it. So I usually take it out in the summer and let um, nature also help me out with other um, insects that like to eat mealybugs. That's what I did this past um, spring and summer. And this is another type of prayer plant. And let's see if the name's still on here. Oh, it disappeared already. It's one I had never seen before. And the prayer plants are kind of difficult. In my experience, I've had some and they haven't lasted me more than a couple, a year and a half, some of them. But this one, um, I took it outside and most of the ones I take outside during spring and summer in a shaded area that maybe re re receives just partial sun, survive and do good. But I bring them in in winter. So this is one I'm bringing in back in winter. And um, she's pretty interesting, but it's not a common one you see all the time. And right over here, this is <laughs> a little succulent arrangement I did, but it's um, outside. It was outside. It's a ruby necklace, and I just brought it in because it's winter. It's drying out a little bit. I have to be more careful with my watering here. And then it has this little variety of succulents. Um, when I traveled, some of them were underwater. They're my front porch, and some of them died, but it's okay. I still have quite a bit in there and I could always propagate with a little leaf and create other little plants to fill it in. It's okay if your plants don't do that well all the time. Just give them time and attention and try to see what there was a problem and they can get better after some time. But letting you know that not all of our plants are always perfect and that's okay and that's normal. Okay, so this is a burl marks and it's a variegated kind. And um, it's uh, really, really pretty. Look at this leaf right here. Seems like I got splashed with something. What happened here? <laughs> Coffee? I don't know. But see, the parts that are very white tend to burn easily. And I do have it close to a window here. So I think that's what's happened there. And right over here, we have um, another Hoya. I got it from Lowe's. I think it said... Um, DS70, and I know it's kind of controversial, or Bertunii, something like that. It's had the name on it. That's what um, it said when I bought it. It's controversial. Some people say it's not that name. It's another name. But anyhow, Bertunii, yeah. And I love it. Love, love. I have two of these. And why do I love it? It's a type of Hoya, so that means it has the little, little thick, little secular feeling leaves. This one's actually a little soft and fussy, like a little soft fuss that you feel. Um, and you see it gets sun stress. You see this burgundy color to it here, pinkish, whoo, gorgeousness. Love it and not problematic at all. Really recommend this one. And over here, it's a Hoya Cretisia. This baby needs water. I forgot about it yesterday. I saw it and need to give it water. And I know that because the leaves are thin, but these leaves are pretty cool because they have little stripes let's see if we can get a good light right there you see how it has oh, little s silver sparkles it's really pretty we need to water this one make sure we don't forget okay so right over here we have philodendron brantianum and this one is a rescue plant and uh i need to do i need to work on it a little bit it's still kind of scrawny uh, but she's alive and she's in a cute little planter. Right over here, we have a different type of Hoya. This is a Hoya Pachiclada. Thank you. I sussed it. My husband did good. He remembered. <laughs> okay. You know what? This one has not flowered in a few years, but when it did flower, it was beautiful. So I, I that's why I brought it over here so it could give more light and hopefully it could flower. But I still love the color. It's like a lighter green color and I love that contrast. Okay, this is a Hoya Carii or Carry, however you want to pronounce it. It's known for its heart-shaped leaves. How gorgeous is that? This baby was not doing too much and all of a sudden I took it to my work and I put it um by a window and it started giving me so many more hearts filling in the little gaps see how full it is 
And now I brought it back home and it's been here for three months and gave that big old stem right there. And it could be filled with heart soon. I'm excited. We'll see what happens here. And then right over here, it's a Peperomia string of turtles. Cutest plant. Mm, this is a plant that I would always want to have in my collection. If they're easy to <laughs> overwater, uh, but you don't want to underwater either. Guys, look what I found. <gasps> a ladybug. It is the weirdest thing happening in my house. There's all these ladybugs in my upstairs that are coming in through the window. So now they're trickling my, to my downstairs. And hey, I'm not mad about it because ladybugs can eat some of the insects in your plants or the pests. So, and I like ladybugs. They're not an insect that grosses me out or anything like that. So I think she's working there. That's awesome. This is a type of Ripsalis, but I'm not sure exactly the species. But she's growing. You see the needle of growth there? I like it because it's just weird. And I, add, I love seeing the differences between the different leaves like having a mixture everywhere. Like this Hoya. Waetii, it's this one. And this is a Shepardii. I have two different types of Hoyas. This one's just thinner, longer, more like, looks like green beans. This is a little bit wider. And this has a variegation. Um, I'm working and not underwatering it. I think it's underwater. And sometimes it looks a little dehydrated. But she has flowered for me. Uh, I like that a lot. Now here, here, here. I've done videos of this, my string of hearts variegated. And the coolest thing in my story here is that when I bought it at the beginning of 2020, these were very hard to come by and expensive too. At this point, they're easier to find, but I paid about $50. I know it was crazy for just this little bit of plant, like a little piece like this. So I, and I even did a video and I showed it to you guys. To you guys. If you guys started sh uh, seeing me by the beginning of my plant journey, um, I'm so happy it didn't die on me because look how big and pretty it is. So once in a while, I'll just get a string and wrap it around here on the top and then it roots and it gets fuller and fuller. Love that one. Okay, right over here, it's called a Peperomia white cloud and this is not a common one you find. And I found it at Lowe's from Costa Farms. And you see how it has little variegation in some of the leaves, like here? It reminds me of the string of turtles, therefore I fell in love with this one when I saw it. And I'm taking care of it like the string of turtles. Um, they're getting plenty of light and I just have to make sure I don't overwater or underwater. Um, but I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm watering more often than I would maybe a Hoya because these are a little bit, um, they're not, their leaves are not as thick. Um, you see, sometimes I feel I'm underwater. You see that? So, but I have it in a nice big pot. It's, it's hard to overwater. Of course, when I water it, I make sure, you know, you can water. If, I don't want it to stay sitting in water. Usually when I water it, it doesn't even have a lot of excess water here. And I just do it more often. Okay. So here is another Bertunia Hoya, which I told you I had two of. Gorgeous, right? She's gorgeous. And yes, this one flowers very often. It's not the prettiest flower of the Hoya flowers, but it's very often flowering and it smells nice. It does create a little mess. Some to see all these little balls are from the, from the little flowers that are just falling, but it's okay. And then right over here, we have a philodendron. <laughs> Golden goddess, anti- Hi, sunrise, something like that. It had two plants in one. This is also from Costa Farms. This was in 2020 that they were selling a lot of these. And this is how mine's looking nowadays. She is, I think she could have bigger, thicker leaves, but I had it in another spot where it wasn't getting too much light. Then I brought it over here to get more light. So if it had something to climb, I think it would give even bigger leaves. But hey, I like it. I like it because it's a nice little pop. Very nice. Okay, so here, guys, is where I have a lot of my cactus, sec uh, a lot of my cacti, more than one, right? It's cacti. Um, and I do have some euphorbia, some different types of succulents, some string of plants, string of spades. 
and what was the other one orange i remember the name of the other one but mm, they were in my front porch they got very dehydrated when i traveled i'm trying to be better at watering them now that they're inside I'm not going to, I'm going to just kind of show you, I'm not going to give you all the names because I honestly don't remember all of the names, but um, these are some type of grassulas. Uh, this is one of the cactus that's known for, it's called like a booby cactus, which is another name for it. I like different types of cacti, uh, cacti that are blue-ish color, and this is a monstrous type. I love round ones. I love haworthias. And so you can see a little bit here. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? A type of grassula. And I have a video where I actually, not too long ago, I did it, right? Well, maybe within six months ago, where I show each one of these and I give, try to get the names as best as possible. So therefore, I don't want to spend too much time here, but I just want to give you a little brief view of this cuteness. How cute is this? And it's just the details of stopping and looking at each one of them that's so entertaining. And when they do give you a flower, that's so special and stunning. So I love leafy plants and I love cacti also because they're just so different. And when they do give you a flower, it's, it's mesmerizing. Coming right over here, I have a red emerald philodendron. She is gorgeous. Got her at the beginning of my plant journey for like 35 bucks. She was maybe, she was already maybe halfway there, but she's grown a lot and I cut and I propagate and I share with friends. A string of hearts. I absolutely love string of hearts. Look at this, look at this. She's touching the ground. Okay, I propagate her often. So, and then back here, of course, we have here my Monstera Thai constellation. And I did do a video of where she almost died out of root rot at the beginning of my plant journey. And I do a video of rescuing her. Some people have wondered how she's doing. Well, this is her. She's doing really good. She's beautiful. We have here uh, Monstera Siltipicana with some dry leaves. She's not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, she became very stringy, so that's why I wrapped her up here. But yeah, I have to clean her out. And I think if she was outside, she would do so much better. And right over here, we have uh, Philodendron Mykins. She's coming out of this, wrapping over here in my fireplace. Lost lots of leaves here. So I need to probably wrap her up again. They do. These are low light. Um, they're doing pretty good. This is a Monstera uh, Stanleyana. And, you know, this is kind of not too much variegation. Once in a while we get the variegation, but then it can get brown. So this one's a little hard to know where to place it. Okay, so this is my Philodendron Brantianum. And I love the silvery leaves. I know this one can be complicated. And yes, a lot of times it gives you very small leaves and you're wanting bigger ones. But I'm kind of just not doing too much with it. Look at it. I think it's like crawling up there by itself. Um, I, I, I think it wants to grab on. So, but anyway, she's, she's using the light from here, my Ikea cabinet. That's what she's living off of. Right over here, I have woo, my Monstera Albo. And what the coolest thing is that I found this for a regular price Monstera, I just had slightly a little speck of variegation. I think it was this leaf. It was something like this, small, small, small. And yes, it ended up being more variegated. Every time we get a new leaf, it's a little more variegated than the previous. This is the latest leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? Another string of hearts here. There's some dry ones there. I had to clean that out. That's just normal of plant parenting. You know, it's okay to have some dry leaves once in a while. It is very normal. My IKEA cabinet is right here, used like a little greenhouse. I have some philodendron. I think this is the uh, Stordiori. I basically chopped because it was very long and I put the little um, notes in, in here in water first and it did propagate. I have uh, my philodendron. I think this is a splendid, another propagation. And some Ahoya Callistophilia and Florida philodendron. 
ghost, I believe. And then we have here a beautiful Ethereum. Let me open this up. Blush. And it's getting kind of dark here, so. Um, we have uh, an angonema, uh, epipernum variegated. And this is another type of epipernum, but it has more of the yellow variegation. So I need to do a little cleanup on her so we won't go too into depth. And then over here is a Hoya Queen, Crimson Queen. She is gorgeous gorgeous love the, the the white leaves with pink stem gorgeous and they can, she gives such a beautiful flower when she flowers let's go to another section so we have some snake plants here as you can see this one's usually in my back patio but for now it's here she's really giant um this is the one that's called like a whale snake plant uh she's given up a baby and here we have a little bit of other little plants that are in the snake plant family so that's very cool these are pretty easy and are handling low right here this is my um dragon fruit cacti which is doing awesome and this is ooh, this is a spiral cactus that i found accidentally don't you love it when you get a deal like that it was starting to spiral so i got it for like 20 some dollars and uh it's continuing to spir spiral. Did get some burnt outside of my front porch while I was traveling. That's sad, but she's still spiraling and I love it. It was a great find. This is my Monstera Dubii, which, you know, this is hard. It's hard. And I don't know if I would highly recommend it because they become so long and you don't know where to put them. So I put tape the other day here. Um, but I don't know if I'm gonna want her to go up my wall. Some plants, I love how they would look, but if it's too thin, I don't know if I'm going to love it. I only would love it if it became big, big leaves like this. And this is my Philodendron White Knight. And she did have pests, so she's not looking that great. I think it was thrips, but we treated her and waiting for her to do better. In my house, I have my Philodendron Marble Pink Princess. She also had pests, thrips. She's been treated, waiting for her to get happier. And then this is my also my Cacti um, Peru. I think it's just called Peru, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> Peruvian cactus, yes. And um, I got it at Walmart for 12 bucks. She was, it was this size. And look how much it's grown. They do come sometimes to Walmart, so keep your eyes out because you can end up getting a huge cacti that cactus that you didn't pay too much for. This is another variety, so that one doesn't grow. Big differences according to the variety of the cactus you get so this is in the morning i just wanted to give you a little view of how it looks in the morning how the sunshine comes in this is in winter um, when the sun shines really nicely in but it's not like this the whole um year it's more in the summer in the spring in the winter so it just varies but they're so happy year round here So I'm here in my kitchen dining room table and this is my amazing plant wall. This plant wall has been going strong for a good two and a half years. So now I can say confidently that these plants tolerate low light um, because they're living off of this artificial light that I only turn it on in the evenings. Yes, I do have windows here, but the orientation on this side of our house does not really get direct sunlight coming in ever. So. Therefore, it's never getting very high amount of light. I've been playing with the plants that can survive here and these have been the successful ones. And these boxes are from Ikea and uh, we've mounted them against the wall and they are holding up pretty great. I think each box was around $7. So it was a cheap way of mounting them. And this is the dream I had for it to be a waterfall of plants. And I used to have like a different just painting here, but this is so much better than a painting. Um, this is a live. So this is an Ethereum Clarinorbium. And then right underneath it, we have, we're gonna see a lot of pothos here. This is a pot marble pothos right there. And then we have a Skindapsis Silver Ann. She's hiding down here. And we have a Golden Pothos here. We have 
uh, global green pothos here. She's coming off the top. We have a neon pothos. We have a uh, regular green pothos. We have, let's see, I'm gonna have to get on one of these chairs because I do not fit. Okay, let's go over here. This is a uh, Manjula pothos. Oh, I love this one. It's one of my favorites. And she is dangling down, happily growing. This is a Skindapsis, a uh, Moonlight Skindapsis. She's in here. Look, it's a long little line. And then there's just two leaves here. She, a lot of people have issues with these growing very full or quick. And it's been slow for me. And we here we have a Skindapsis exotica with a big, gorgeous leaves. I've cut and propagated her to give her to friends. If not, she would be all the way to the floor. A lot, most of my plants would be on the floor, but I've cut and propagated um, to share. And this is a Skindapsis argirius. I love Skindapsis, any type of Skindapsis, but easy to take care of, does not, not need a lot of light. We have another global green pothos. We have an epiprenum. Oof, what is this one? We have some green, some dryness. He wants to know I have to come here and clean out. That's normal. It's okay. I shouldn't do my chores right now, but oh, what is the name? Can you look it up? Uh, it's here. Oh, yes, we have a name tag. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, Baltic Blue Pothos. Yay. It's, it's, all of this is it. Um, if it had more light, it would probably have fenestrations, but because it's in low light, it's growing, but not with fenestrations, but that's okay. And I have a Hoya Virtusa here, which is so crazy that I have a Hoya here, but I do it. And she's been here for a couple of years. And we have a Cebu Blue Pothos, or, but I think it's an Epiprenum, not Pothos. If you really look up the official name, I love them and she's doing great. And then right here in the corner, let me zoom out, is a, uh, my Philodendron Gloriosum. I've taken her outside and brought her back in right now in winter. This is a new leaf that just unfurled. And um, she's gorgeous. And um, But there is, as you can see, when I traveled for three months, I think she got underwatered. I was having somebody come water her every week and a half. And we saw some browning. I think it was due to underwatering. So unfortunately, some leaves got hurt. But she's still alive and she's going to continue growing. And then right over here, we have a philodendron pink birkin. If you've heard of those, um, you probably wondered, do th they don't get a lot of pink, at least not here for me now. When it's gonna open up a new leaf, it does have a pink blush to it. Um, but I still think she's a pretty cool growing plant and I, and I do love her. Okay, let's go to the other side here. I had a big silver sword philodendron that recently broke took it away and actually it's still here you see that it's right there the little it can still regrow back i'm propagating the other part and this is um a paraiso bell a paraiso verde uh philodendron and supposed to have irrigation recently just kind of put that pot there because it needed a little stick but i'm going to work on that right over here we have a chameleon cc plant so she, this is a rescue plant from Lowe's and she's doing good. She usually was outside. She's here for the winter. So chameleon usually has more of a light green, lime green new growth and then turns darker. Right over here, I have like a marble type of Skindapsis variegation. I got this one sent to me from Asia. Um, I did an unboxing video of her and she's still growing. She's slow. And right over here, we have a uh, Hoya. It's called the, the Sunrise Hoya, something like that. And she can get beautiful colors if you give her highlight. I don't have her where she has highlight. I definitely need to move her. And um, right over here is my kitchen. And I have some plants here in my kitchen. I've always talked, to, I've made a video where I showed these little cookie racks where I've just used some little copper wire and I wrapped around some plants here. This is a string of tears. She's doing okay. And we have type of Hoya here. What is it called? It has the 
egg. Back to this one, it's a Hoya Crinkle 8. Yay. Remember. <laughs> this is a uh, Callistophilia, oh no, Finlandsonia, Finlandsonia. And she's about to flower there. Do you see right there? That's where the flower is going to come. And I think this is a Memoria Hoya. Small little leaves here. And this is my silver dragon, Alocasia. Also, sometimes bring, her, bring it outside when it's summer. And then here, this is my recent little uh, Sensi uh, CZ plant, which is so cute. It has a curl little leaves. CZ plants are so easy. And this is usually outside. It's like a type of uh, blue cacti, candle cacti. And then I do have some of these, which are the, what are these called? It's called a type of like living, like a stone. Lithop. Lithop, a type of lithop. They're not doing that good. I've lost some. And my air plants, this baby needs water. Sarah's Cer Graphica. She's gorgeous. Um, and we have more air plants here. I literally, this one needs to be popped in here in place in the little hole. <laughs> but I can't reach it. But I just stick them in here when I need to water. I pull them out and then I water my air plants. Right over here on this side, um, I have another air plant. And this is a another type of Hoya. Back. This is the Hoya Memoria. <laughs> and this is this is the Hoya Croiana Silver. And uh, she needs to be watered. I forgot to water her the other day. I skipped her accidentally. That happens sometimes, unfortunately. Um, this air plant is basically dead. I needed to remove her. She got overwatered when I was traveling. She sat wet. You never want air plants to sit wet on this part. It was mushy when I arrived and I was trying to see if she woke up, but she's not waking up. Another type of air plant here. They're so easy to take care of. I love air plants. This is a uh, million hearts, the Skidia. And this is this my is bathroom, my downstairs bathroom. And I feel that when you come to this bathroom, you have an experience. Let me show you why. So we have here a plant called the Monstera uh, Swiss cheese. No, the mini Monstera or the Graffita Forma. And she just has grown up this plant wall. First, I started by putting little hooks here. And then gradually she started grabbing onto herself. Let's, let me give you a little close up. You see here, these are roots that are touching the wall and it's just climbing, climbing. You see those long roots that are just grabbing to the ceiling now. At this point, she's walking the ceiling. And uh, I didn't, know, didn't think it was really gonna happen, but it did and good and bad. The bad thing is that it actually can, it's gonna mess up my paint. Like when it does detach, it's gonna leave a mark. So if you don't want that to happen and it's a big deal for you, don't let it do that. But if you are okay with it, then it's gonna be an experience to watch it climb like if it was in nature. So the plant's really, really happy. Um, right over here is a variegated Hoya Hindu rope. She's cute. And then here's a pink princess. So you gotta remove the dead pink princess. Here she is. Got these little things at Walmart. They've been so cool, I enjoyed them. And this is a type of Syngonium. I think this was the pink, conf uh, pink splash, pink confetti, milk confetti. It was a milk confetti, but she's not doing really good and she lost her pink. <laughs> But believe me, she was that. Um, I need to keep an eye on that baby. And then here is a Scandapsis Silver Splash. And what is the coolest is that it, it is started attaching to the wall by itself. Right now it needs water. You see it by the wrinkling of the leaves. You can tell she needs water. Very easy. I actually water her in place. I just, um, she has her plastic pot and then sitting in here. So I just think I have something to you can catch the water here, but I just try not to overwater, um, and therefore I don't have to remove her out of that. So if not, it's a lot of work. But uh, so far, so good. And this is uh, a type of 
ficus and this is called the rubber taniki and i just lost the leaf <laughs> it's okay uh, it's grown so much since i put it here so now it's hitting against that it doesn't look the coolest this literally i should bring it up but i haven't been able to because then i'm gonna detach this well maybe i can i don't know i have to work on it but she's just kind of grown and i've had this one for a few years and i love the variegation not very hard to take care of easier than the fiddle leaf tree it's not as picky and see the so the silver splash uh skindapsis is like growing all the way down okay guys so and this is a white knight that's doing terrible guys the white knights from philodendrons got full of like thrips and uh, we can still save them but they don't look that great right now and right over here in my shower i have put my staghorn fern and uh, this is just a guest bathroom people don't stay here too often of course when my guests come i can remove it but uh, it's easy to water it there so i like it okay so i like that my bathroom feels like you're outside that that was my whole theme that i was going for like you're in here but you feel like you're outside isn't that cool guys okay, so i've entered one of my guest rooms and um here we have a giant plant this is a uh, philodendron silum and i got this when she was little for 3.99 and I do think that part of its big growth is because I do take it outside in my back patio um, and it's helped it grow a lot. But I think she looks pretty cool and stunning here. Um, champagne Jam Goldfish Plant. I was trying not to forget the name of this one. She just got watered, but she's pretty cool. Look at the back side of these leaves. It's a plant that it's not very common to see anywhere. I just found it in my local nursery and i was not gonna buy it but i couldn't stop thinking of her and she's been easy to water she does give a flower um she's getting ready to flower now it's usually i think an orangey flower so that's really cool but she grows kind of crazy um here we have a super blue pothos and it's was so long it was dangling down so i ended up just doing that hooking it on the other side and look what it's done now it's walking up the wall pretty cool i had more plants but i worry about having too many plants close to people's beds uh, <laughs> this is in a plastic pot also and right over here we have a domino uh, piece lily look at the variegation she's a pretty one really really pretty one easy she lets you know when she needs to be watered and usually I have another plant hanging there. I need to choose another one. Uh, but it needs to be a low light tolerating one because it doesn't get a lot of light in that corner. So I'm choosing more of the windows. This is a philodendron. Um, Brazil. And look at that. Just different colors of green. I love philodendrons. She's doing good. Maybe you saw what I bought her at my logo nursery. And here is my fiddle leaf tree I got from Aldi's um it was a little more full and it lost some leaves i had it in the back patio brought it in usually it goes in through a little shock but pretty doing pretty good i cannot complain <laughs> i love my baby it's been with me it's this is the plant that started my plant love i started researching how to take care of it through youtube videos start putting practice what i learned started doing better and this plant turned into over 200 house plants in my house so this is another anthurium silver blush and you can see why it's called a silver blush because it's a blush color when a new baby comes out a new leaf <gasps> oh, beautiful and then right over here is an epiprenum uh, variegated and look it's climbing up the wall yes i'm ruining the paint of my walls but it's worth it um <laughs> i just feel like if i ever have to move sell this house i'll just paint it again but it's worth for me to see my babies when they're these type of plants that like to climb it's so hard to have a pole that's long enough so my walls are my poles and yes it does attach even though there's paint sometimes people have wondered look at all those roots oh my so i'm just excited to see it grow bigger and bigger leaves and see what it does in its happy place this is the pink princess has she attached? I don't think she's attached. I'm holding her with a little hook. And look how pink these leaves are. 
it's a little too pink <laughs> so sometimes they have trouble afterwards because they can't um, process the light as well when there's no green but that's her and then we have here uh, this is a Swiss cheese uh, Monstera oh she's pretty isn't she and right over here whoa okay this plant normally it's not here but this is what we do in winter because she's usually outside in my patio that's it's a big old pot and uh this is where i have her because there was a hook here and i found no other place to put her in i just watered her so now we put that there to catch any drops that come out so that's one room my second um guest bedroom and this is my plant room that i call too because it's a little heavier on the plant side but there is a bed for guests um here i do have Three plants. This is a Swiss cheese variegated one. Let's get on top of the bed so we can see it. You can see the variegation here. It just lost two leaves. I think I underwatered it. These plants, Swiss cheese, you cannot go under underwater or overwater. And here is a variegated epipenum, and it has really pretty variegations. This one I've been propagating, and um, I liked putting them here because these are plants that like to climb. And therefore now they can be here and have some kind of structure in the back to hold them this is a pink princess again she was getting really long and by putting her here she has some thing to hold her uh, over here i just have a little uh memories here from traveling i don't have too many plants that used to have plants here but it has low light so right now i just have two plants that i'm overwintering and this is a type of I think it's a type of agave plant that somebody gave me and this is um, this type of <laughs> um, euphorbia with some type of <laughs> it's called a moon something this top one here which is cute um, but that's it this is just gonna be here for a few months they won't grow much because they're not getting much light but I don't think they'll die either and this is uh, my IKEA cabinet which it helps you know to be able to put a lot more plants i had two i sold one um honestly little plants are the ones that give you the most trouble because there's a lot of little waterings to do versus a big plant it's easier to water it and forget about it um so i'm gonna be very quick here this is a lipstick plant i love the variegation this is my silver sword that i recently cut because it broke and i'm propagating it there and this is my also ascendapsis with a silver splash and the coolest thing is that the cyst is the same plant she's nice and long but towards the back it found its way by itself without me helping it or guiding it to the wall and attached and that's been my favorite way of seeing scandapsis just grow in like they would like to in nature and right over here i showed you guys this is like a little plastic candy uh jug from the dollar tree i have sphagnum and i have some pl plant propagations in here i did not make any holes so i can't close it because if not it um it's too much humidity a uh, beautiful little succulent here i forgot her name i usually have her in my porch variegated um well thin snake plant and i have some pretty cool orchids here uh sleeping for winter but they'll come back <gasps> I think this is a new growth it's having a little growth now yeah and it's another one over here they're sleeping but they should come back for the spring and this is a cedar burrow's tail donkey's tail um lost a lot because when you move these they lose a lot of little leaflets and this one fell in a storm outside little type of little succulent and we're moving down here some other varieties of succulents look at that look at that a ripsalis. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm blocking my light. What a cute little pot. Oh my, you see, I have fun here. A type of chrysula, a bear's paw, succulent, variegated. Oh, I love this one. You have to touch it. If you ever get one, if you ever see one, get one. It's fussy. Feels like you're touching a little bear's paw. Absolutely great. And then we have here uh, some type of hoya that's give a bit big of a big old stem but it hasn't given me a flower so i've had it for two years this one has not grown 
These are from the Dollar Tree, these little plastic containers, and I almost threw them away. But then I thought, okay, let me see what I could do with it. And I put this Hoya Rotunda Folia here, and I put, this is a baby off of this one. And this one has a name. It's a Chiveria Gavoides, um hybrid with a Polydonis. You can see the name there. She's been easy. I don't do that great with all these succulents, but some have been easy and they've stayed with me. So that's a baby. And then I think this is called like a, it's a type of Vermiliate Earth Star. And it's a baby and I put her in there. And then this here is my Anthurium Regal. <gasps> okay, there is mealybugs here, guys. This is reality. See, mealybug. That's how you can identify it. It's white, fuzzy. That's not a very hard one. Not to take to take care of in a plant like an Anthuria. Oh my, there's mealybugs. Not seen mealybugs on her before. But it's okay. What we're going to do is just use a little bit of um, alcohol with a Q-tip and clean that, clean it out. Um, and then we have a tear, no, string of pearls, no, string of watermelon here. String of watermelon. She was flowering too. Isn't that cool? And then we have a variegated Hoya. Oh my, I thought she wasn't doing anything, but I just saw there's two little hearts coming there and there. It's a variegated kind. Very, very hard. She's so, so slow. If she was outside, I think she would do so much better. Because I have for an explain that has her outside and she's grown a lot. This is an, eth an ethereum. And I forgot. I think this is a magnificum. And uh, it's okay. It's okay. She's still alive. She can give me a new leaf. This one got brown while I, um, some months ago. And waiting for a new leaf. But as long as we keep watering her, we have hope. These are just a lot of little propagations. Isn't that cool? Just toss them in there, water them, and look at it. Whoa. String of pearls, a variegated kind. Uh, string of buttons. We have a string of hearts. We have a donkey's tail. Yep. And then this is a syngonium that a friend gave me. Oh my. It's just funny because it's it's grown so much. And it was like just a little cutting. And I've been chopping and putting it back in. Chopping, appropriating it in water and then putting it back in. And it's grown to be one of the most beautiful syngoniums I have. And I don't know its name. Gorgeous. Do you know its name? Let me know. And then there's this alocasia. I think this is called a pink stem. This is one of the videos that was the most watched of saving some plants from blows. This one had no leaves when I got it. And look at it. It's so pretty. Some of the other ones I've given, given away because I couldn't handle more plants. Um, but yes, exciting. Uh, sa uh, Caladium sansothsama, something like that. Uh, this has not been so easy. And then here we have a lot of cact cacti, guys. You see, it's all hidden in here. This is because it's winter. I had to find a spot for them, and they're here. Um, they're usually in my front porch. Okay, and this is a Cebu Blue Pothos. She is amazing because look at her. She's growing up the wall. She did it all by herself. I didn't intend for this to happen. She found the wall. And there she is. She's happy. I intended her to just be around these little bamboo sticks, but she is growing towards the window and it's exciting. And then here is my little propagation station. I did a video of this. Um, I think it's great because it's a uh, it's very easy to see when you need to replace the water. It's very neat looking, so that's cool. And this is my horse head philodendron. Usually it's outside, it doesn't look like it's so in its place here, but it's winter, guys. We're living with more plants than we normally live inside our house right now, but we make it work. We make it work. Isn't that beautiful? Stunning. Gosh, I didn't talk about the, her. She's my $5 Monstera from Lowe's, also on clearance. And look how she's grown. What do you think about that? I love her. <laughs> I usually take her to my back porch. Um, she does really good. But I finally found this spot inside my house where she's not in people's ways. And uh, she's even more of a she'll stop her here. I guys wanted to show you guys how she receives beautiful light in the morning. All the plants do. As you can see here, there's even light in the in my bed here. It's not my bed. It's a guest bedroom bed. <laughs> but um. I love the sunlight that comes in. Look at that, how pretty is that? Now I did want to show over here, 
This is where I have a lot of my plant things to take care of my plants, uh, little doggy pet stuff. But right over here, you see this is a Raffi de Forba de Cursiva. Oh, I think it's also known by a dragon's tail. Um, and she is so cool because she has been very easy. See buddies, but it's buddies. She's been very easy, nonchalant, no complications, doesn't lose leaves, but their leaves are spread apart, as you can see here. And um, she did start already grabbing on right there and climbing by herself. First, I had the little um, little holders there, but as you see right there, she has attached herself. Look at that, isn't that crazy? But yeah, this is another cool plant that most guests, when they come to this room, I think this is a plant that they are more amazed with. So that's pretty cool in my little plant jungle room. Go upstairs. So these are not doing that great, to be honest with you. But it's okay. I mean, it's reality. And they're alive, so it's okay. For example, this is my... Monstera Salty Picana. I think she's facing the window. Let's give her a turn. She has lots of crunchiness. Why? Or underwatering. Yes, I admit to that. This one has been underwatered, but it's okay. I'll just take time. You know, that's what I do. I come and clean her out when I understand I've done this, and I'll just keep my eye on her more often. But she's pretty cool, pretty chill. Um, but she's growing long. But look, so pretty. And this is my philodendron squamiferum that you could be found at Lowe's. And um, I just brought her up here. She was in a, and I'm trying to like put her against the wall because she's also growing long and she doesn't know what to do. And I've lost some leaves that turned yellow. I don't know if it was underwatering. I don't know, but I'm trying to keep my eye on her more. But this one plant is known for its fussy stem. It makes it so cool and unique, but she's a work in progress. These both babies require my attention. My Pachira, Pachira Aquatica money tree. And um, I love her. I am shocked how much I've learned to love her. I got her at Aldi's and it, she was like $6 and she's grown so much. And it's beautiful to see the little new little leaflets like this forming <laughs> and then just growing into size. She does like getting a little more light. So I try to put her in areas where she gets more light in the morning sometimes um and i think that's helped contribute a lot for her growth if you have one of those these i encourage you to put her close to her window um and that will help her but very easy not very sensitive beautiful isn't Here's she my bathroom and i do have some plants i have a uh, manjula pothos one of my favorites these are little um planters from big lots and i have a a raven um, CZ and the raven CZs are known because they, when there's new growth, it's nice and green and then it turns black. I think it looks great here. And this is a Swiss cheese also, but the narrow form. The other one I showed earlier was a white form. And uh, she's been hard. She hasn't grown much and I've had her for two years. And if I make a little mistake like underwatering, that happens. And then over here, I have, uh, I think it's uh, Pearls and Jade Pothos. She got kind of lanky, so I kind of tied her up there because when we were traveling, she got underwater and lost lots of leaves. And then right over here, I have a Ficus Audrey. And I recently moved her up here and she's liking it because in the morning, this window receives morning light. And uh, I've seen more growth since I brought her over here. So right now she looks short, but one day she's gonna fill in this spot here. So I think it's gonna look really nice. So yeah, so pretty. I love touching her. She's nice and fuzzy. Doesn't leave, I don't think if you see her, she stands out so much, but when you touch her, you end up loving one of these plants. So there you go. Those are my over 200 house plants. And um, thank you for visiting. Thank you for coming along with me because I love talking about plants. So there's more to come. If you want to learn and hear more about plants, 
I keep sharing on my channel where I buy a lot of these plants, um, how I take care of these plants. I'm gonna try to do more this year of how I take care of my plants. Um, I definitely plan to increase the amount of videos I make. Um, I recently um, left the job I had so I can have a little more time to dedicate to this plant passion I have. Hopefully what I've learned um, helps you, entertains you, and we also can share with each other tips and tricks on how to take care of these beautiful houseplants so we can enjoy this beautiful green plant oasis that we create around us. So don't forget to take time for yourself every day and enjoy the beautiful things around you. I hope you guys will have a wonderful night, a wonderful year, and we'll keep on talking. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you enjoy. Till the next one, bye.